subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In my previous lecture video, I have discussed about Malus law, double refraction and double refraction in calcite crystal. In this lecture video, I will discuss about Huggins double refraction theory and applications of polarization with example LCD that is liquid crystal display. So let's get started. The content of this lecture video is Huggins theory of double refraction which I will discuss in detail. Followed by I will discuss about applications of polarization with example liquid crystal display. Huygens principle proposed by Christian Huygens in 1678 revolutionized our understanding of light and its characteristics. You may be familiar with the rectilinear theory of light that purports that light travels along straight paths. Huygens principle is one of the key methods for studying various optical phenomena. The principle is method of analysis applied to problems of wave propagation both in the far field limit and in near field diffraction and also reflection. It states that every point on wavefront is in itself the source of spherical wavelets which spread out in the forward direction at the speed of light. The sum of these spherical wavelets forms the wavefront. The new wavefront is the tangential surface to all of these secondary wavelets. As shown in figure A and figure B, the expanding waves may be demonstrated in a ripple tank by sending plane waves towards a barrier with a small opening. If waves approaching to beach strike a barrier with small opening, the waves may be seen to expand from the opening. Huygens principle provides a convenient way to visualize refraction as shown in figure C. If points on the wavefront at the boundary of different medium serves as sources of the propagation light, one can see why the direction of the light propagates changes. Now let's see what are primary and secondary sources. After the primary wavefront is created, a secondary wavefront is created from every primary wavefront. Secondly, every point on the wavefront acts as a secondary source of light that emits more wavefronts. The net effect is that the effective wavefront generated in tangential to all the secondary wavefronts generated by the secondary sources as shown in this figure. In this way, a light wave propagates through space by generating secondary sources and the wavefronts. The direction of the transverse is always perpendicular to the wavefronts. Here plane and spherical wavefronts are shown. Huygens stated that light is a wave that propagates through space much like ripples in water or sound in air. Hence light spread out like a wave along with all directions from a source. The locus of points that travel some distance during a fixed time interval is called a wavefront. Thus from a point source of light, the locus of points that light has traveled during a fixed time period is a sphere, a circle if you consider in 2D source. Now let's see spherical wavelet associated with ordinary waves. According to Huygens theory of double refraction, a point in a doubly refracting or birefringent crystal produces two types of wavefronts. As shown in this figure, when ordinary light incident on a crystal surface, the wavefront corresponding to the ordinary ray are spherical wavefront. The ordinary waves travel with same velocity in all directions and so the corresponding wavefront are spherical. When the light with velocity v is incident on the crystal surface, the primary plane wavefront will be generated. 
followed by spherical wavelets of ordinary waves will be generated and there is a propagation of ordinary wave fronts in the crystals will be observed this is shown in this diagram now let's see ellipsoidal wavelet associated with extraordinary waves as shown in this diagram when ordinary light incident on a crystal surface the wavefront corresponding to the extraordinary ray are ellipsoidal wavefront the extraordinary waves have different velocities in different directions so the corresponding wavefront is elliptical which is shown in this diagram in huygens theory of double refraction let's see the dependence of incident angle and propagation properties of light in first case when optic axis is parallel to incident light direction as shown in this figure a which shows unpolarized plane wave front ab incident normally on the crystal surface xy the optic axis lies along xy and is in the plane of incident at the point a and point b it develops two wave fronts one spherical for ordinary ray and one elliptical for extraordinary ray the envelope of ordinary ray and extraordinary ray gives the corresponding wave front which is plane polarized it should be noted that both ordinary and extraordinary ray are plane polarized light here both ordinary ray and extraordinary ray travels along the same directions with different velocities as o ray and e ray travel along the same direction with different velocities a path difference is introduced between them in this case double refraction is not observed now let's see second case when optic axis is perpendicular to incident light as shown in figure b unpolarized wave front ab incident normally on the crystal surface optic axis lies in the plane of incident and perpendicular to the crystal surface as the light is incident in the direction of optic axis ordinary ray and extraordinary ray travel with the same speed along the optic axis as a result ordinary ray and extraordinary ray travel along the same directions with the same velocity hence the phenomena of double refraction is not observed in this case the ordinary and extraordinary wave fronts c d and g h coincide at all instants now let's see the third case when optic axis is inclined to some angle to the incident light as shown in figure c which shows an unpolarized plane wave front incident normally on the crystal surface so that the optic axis makes an angle with crystal surface ordinary ray and extraordinary ray travel with different velocities in different directions in the crystal hence double refraction is observed in this case and both ordinary and extraordinary ray are separated by an angle depending upon the distance traveled in the crystal the principle of double refraction is used in the construction of half wave plates and the quarter wave plates the birefringence of crystals can be modified the polarization state of light which is very useful in many applications this type of optical components are called birefringent wave plates or retardation plates or just wave plates or retarders for the short now let's see the application of polarization one of the most common and practical application of polarization is liquid crystal display in short lcd which is used in numerous devices including wristwatches computer screens timers clocks and the host of others these display systems are based upon the interaction of rod like liquid crystalline molecules with a electric field and polarized light waves in seven segment liquid crystal numerical display the liquid crystalline phase it's sandwiched between two glass plates that have electrodes attached as shown in this figure the liquid crystalline phase exists in a ground state in which the molecules are oriented in layers and each successive layer is slightly twisted to form a spiral pattern 
when polarized light waves interact with the liquid crystalline phase the wave is twisted by an angle of approximately 90 degrees with respect to the incident wave the glass plates are configured with seven black electrodes that can be individually changed light passing through polarizer 1 which is shown in this figure is polarized in the vertical direction and when no current is applied to the electrodes the liquid crystalline phase induces a 90 degrees twist of the light that enables it to pass through polarizer 2 which is polarized horizontally and is oriented perpendicular to the polarizer 1. This light can then form one of the seven segments on the display. When current is applied to the electrodes, the liquid crystalline phase aligns with the current and losses the cholesteric spiral pattern. Light passes through a charged electrode is not twisted and is blocked by polarizers too which is shown in this figure. By coordinating the voltage on the seven positive and negative electrodes, the display is capable of rendering the numbers 0 through 9. In this example, the upper right and lower left electrodes are charged and block light passing through them and allowing formation of the number 2 by the display device which is shown in this diagram. This is the working mechanism of LCD with the help of polarization phenomena. In the applications of polarization, let's see the action of polarized sunglasses. Bright reflections originating from horizontal surfaces such as the highway or the water in a pool are partially polarized with the electric field vectors vibrating in a direction that is parallel to the ground. This light can be blocked by polarizing filters oriented in a vertical direction as illustrated in this diagram. With a pair of polarized sunglasses, the lenses of sunglasses have polarizing filters that are oriented vertically with respect to the frames. In the figure, the blue light waves have their electric field vectors oriented in the same direction as the polarizing lenses and thus are passed through it. In contrast, the red light wave vibration oriented is perpendicular to the filter oriented and is blocked by the lenses. Polarizing sunglasses are very useful when driving in the sun or at the beach where sunlight is reflected from the surface of the road or the water, which leading to glare that can be almost blinding. Polarizing filters are also quite useful in photography where they can be attached to the front of a camera lens to reduce glare and increase overall image contrast in photographs or digital images. Polarizers utilized on cameras are generally designed with a mounting ring that allows them to be rotated in use to achieve the desired effect under various lighting conditions. There are several other examples of polarization. Amongst them few are here. Polarization is used in sunglasses to reduce the glare. Three-dimensional movies are produced and shown with the help of polarization. Polarized airplane window works on polarization phenomena. Similarly, in polarized car glasses and polarized window glasses, polarization is used to reduce the glare. This is all about polarization phenomena. In my next lecture video, I will discuss on problem solving based on interference, diffraction and polarization. So please don't miss my next lecture video. Thank you. Below this video in the description, the link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.